Hi guys, and welcome to part 82 of Skyrim Mod Sanctuary. Now this is the first Skyrim Mod Sanctuary of 2014. I have been away for the holidays, and I have come back to find my inbox absolutely filled with suggestions, mods you'd like me to review, and I also have a few mods that I've wanted to cover for quite some time. Uh, for this video, I'm going to cover Two videos, one suggested by you guys, and one that I've wanted to cover myself. Now, one mod that has uh, been coming up a lot in my mailbox, uh, with people requesting that I cover it, give my opinion on it, is a mod called Immersive First Person. Now, I am going to be totally honest with you, when I first heard about this mod, I was very skeptical indeed, and I thought it was going to be a gimmick. Uh, but I was completely wrong. This is actually a an incredible mod, actually. It is very well done and very well polished with a lot of options. You can set a hotkey that puts you into immersive first-person mode. I'm gonna do that now, I'm gonna press it. And I am now in immersive first-person. Now, if I take my hand off the mouse, you're going to see that the, the screen is still moving. That is my character. His head is moving around. Let me just go back to third person. If you actually look at your character, you will notice that he turns his head constantly. Just from side to side, he's looking around. And if I go back into immersive first person, you can see I'm seeing what my character is seeing, which is well, it's a little strange, actually, but it's kind of cool. I can also look down and see my feet. I can see my hands, and if I take out certain pieces of equipment, like my shield, I can see my shield. That's my sword, my Dawnbreaker sword with its light, and so on. So I can actually see what I'm wearing, which, again, is very cool. Now, one of the reasons that I thought this might be a gimmicky mod was I was expecting it to have, well, a slightly nauseating effect when moving around, and I'll show you what I mean, uh, it, because it does. As you can see, there's, there's a massive amount of head bobbing, and if I turn quickly, or side step, you can see the whole world leaning. That's because my head is doing so, and if I jump, as you can see, it's a little disconcerting. Especially if I move around. And already, I have to be honest, I'm feeling a little nauseous. <laughs> I, I, I really, really couldn't play like this. Which is why I thought it was going to be a gimmick. Um, and it's even worse when I use weapons. So, as you saw there, I'm going to put the sword away. If I remember how. There you go. I'm going to take the sword out again. You see how I look down to the sword to draw it out? Which is kind of cool, but again, the whole world moves. And if I start hitting, you can see... Oh! Sorry, Kaja. As you can see, it's a little disconcerting. Um, it is also impossible to turn around with the mouse. So if I turn now, I can't turn. I'm, I have to actually move to turn. So if I go back out of first person, it's as if I turn and can't look further than there without first turning to do so. Which is realistic. Basically, the mouse controls the head, and I can't turn any more than there. It's kind of like you're on a horseback. And there you go. Now, it's even worse, I think, for bows. I've now got my bow out, I think, but I can't actually see the bow until I draw, and it, it takes a few seconds before I get the feedback that I have a bow and I'm drawing it, which can be a small issue. And as you can see, if I keep changing weapons as I'm running along, there are probably some of you by now already feeling a little sick watching this and have had to close your eyes. However, let me just go back out of first person mode, however, you can actually change that, which is what makes this mod actually really good and really usable. You get an MCM menu with it that allows you to set things up as you like. 
So first things first, let's get rid of that horrible head bob. I mean, I call it horrible, some people are going to love it. Some people are actually absolutely going to love it, uh, but I just don't. Now, from the MCM, as, as you can see, you can actually change the key you use to uh, go in and out of Immersive View, but you also have um, a lot of profile set for different scenarios on mount, when you're using magic, when you're a vampire lord, werewolf, and so on. Um, when sprinting, weapon drawn, I am going to change them all to profile one, at least the ones that are probably applicable. Um, just for now. I'm going to change them all to profile one just for now so that I can change them all at the same time. At least, there you go. Now, if I go to profile one, I've got all of these settings. For example, game FOV, which as you can see is set to 85. I can change that if I want. But the one you really want to know about is rotation head bobbing settings. Now, you can actually turn this down to say, well, let's just say 20. And we'll go back in to immersive first person. And as you can see, the effect is a lot nicer. It's it's faint. Um, if I take my weapon out again, oh, let's go for a sword. It's still there. You still have that feeling of actually moving. But it's not as nauseating. However, for me, it's still too much. I, I still don't. I mean, I, I appreciate the realism and the immersiveness, but it really does, unfortunately, make me feel a bit nauseous. However, I'm just going to turn it to off. And now it's pretty much as if I was playing the normal game, except I can see my feet. I can see my own equipment, as you can see, and my arms. Um, and even when fighting, the camera is dead stable. And this, of course, is true even when I'm using bow. Now you'll notice a little clipping there. You, you see the little clipping on the shoulder? That is one side effect of this. There are some settings you can tweak to combat that, but it is probably something you you might want to think of getting used to because some of the tweaks can cause other problems. But it is very usable like this. Very usable indeed. Okay, but once you've actually turned off the head bobbing, of course, you, you start wondering, well, this is a lot to go through. I mean, it's just a mod that lets you see your feet then. No. Uh, because of all these different profiles, there's a lot of things you can do with it. Uh, for example, I, I'm going to go back into immersive first person. This is my normal profile. As you can see, I can turn, look at my shoulders. When I draw my weapon, did you notice how the, the field of view spread out? I've set a completely different profile for this. So with my weapon drawn, I now have a massive field of vision. Um, probably too much. I'm, I'm using a very large one to give you an idea of the effect. Um, and this would be very good for melee combat, I guess. You can see around you a lot. It is a little disturbing, and I am using a huge number just to give you the idea. However, I've also set it so that when aiming with a bow, the field of view is massively restricted. So, as you saw instantly, as soon as I point with a bow, I'm focused in, like sniper zoom. Now, again, I don't know whether you'd want to play like that, uh, but you have this option. Or perhaps you could set it so that it was, you know, 90 FOV when normally running around, but when sprinting, you suddenly got massive peripheral vision. The first person play now applies also to your horse. Now, you probably noticed a little clipping there. That is, I'm afraid, something you've got to get used to when mounting the horse. But, as you can see, I'm now first person on horseback. And... I'll take out my sword. It works with the combat as well. So I can still fight from horseback in first person. But it also lets you do first person as a werewolf, which I think is brilliant. I think it's absolutely super. It's one of those things I've always wanted to do. 
because the third person in werewolf form is just a tiny bit... I think you lose a little. If I press the immersive first person now, I can now run along and see my claws in front of me as a werewolf. This is especially cool when you use something like my predator vision mod. So you get the thermal vision. I really do feel like a bit of a hunter now. And it's completely playable. I mean, it's absolutely playable in every way. It doesn't change anything. And you can, of course, go out of first person if you want. If you uh, want to go back into combat. Sometimes melee combat is actually easier in third person as a werewolf. But... One of the great things is, once again, you get this great feeling of speed as you go sprinting along as a werewolf. And it even works for vampire form, if you're using the vampire lord form. And you want first person? You can do that too. In the end, this is going to come down to personal taste. Uh, there are some issues for example, with an archer, with not being able to see the bow draw until the very end, and the slight clipping issues. However, the mod is so customizable that you can literally use it in just a couple of circumstances. Perhaps you just want to have first person when a werewolf, or when riding a horse, but not when you play normally. That is possible. There is a key to toggle it on and off. It's very easy to use. You just go into werewolf form, hit the button, and you're in first person. It, the author seems to have thought of everything. You can have this mod, use it when you want, use it in certain circumstances, set it up the way you want, um, and it's no trouble whatsoever. Um, I will say one thing. When you install this mod, and this is true of any mod that uses an MCM system, it may take some time for the MCM menu option to appear. On one of my characters, it actually took almost 10 minutes of just standing there looking at the screen before that menu option appeared. That is not the mod's fault. I've seen some people complaining on that on that page. They complain on other mods as well, and they think it's the mod that's doing it. It's not. It's Sky UI. Sky UI checks for new MCMs every now and again. Um, it doesn't do it over and over, because otherwise that would take a lot of resources. And sometimes it can take a few minutes. The more such menus you have, the longer it can take. One of my characters, though, the menu appeared immediately. But just be aware of that. That is not a problem of the mod. That is just how MCM works. Uh, but obviously, this is one of those mods that you want to tweak pretty much instantly. My guess is... The vast majority of people are going to tweak the head bobbing. It is very aggressive uh, by default. But all round, very well done mod, very polished, a lot of options, really do like it. Now the next mod is a mod I have been meaning to cover for quite some time. Um, and it is a mod that's great for people like me who like to have their faces showing on their character. As you can see here, I'm wearing a Dragon Priest mask, Otar to be precise, and it's got a great little enchantment as Otar. 30% resistance against fire, frost, and shock. Many of the Otar of the masks, the Dragon Priest masks, have great enchantments, they're great items, um, and it makes the Dragon Priests well worth hunting down and killing. However, the masks do look fairly, well, they cover your face completely, they look fairly intimidating, and let's be honest, walking into a, a bar, an inn, and asking for a meal, wearing this mask is, um, well, a little ridiculous. Um, and if, like me, you want your character's face to be showing, it makes all of these masks pretty much something you cannot use. And that is where this mod comes in. This mod re doesn't actually replace the Dragon Priest masks. Um, it adds a new item. It adds a crown that has the same enchantment as the mask. And you receive that crown when you pick the mask up. So you actually can have both the mask and the crown. This is great if you have a player home where you can put the mask on a bust. So you can have all of your masks um, on display and still have the crowns with the enchantments. It's as if you'd disenchanted the mask and enchanted a crown. And if I go along to the Dragon Priest Otar Circlet. Now, I will tell you, at least at the moment, 
the description doesn't seem to match the actual effect. If you look here, the Otar mask is 30% resistance against fire, frost, and shock. The circlet doesn't say that. Um, you will also notice it's light armor. However, if I put it on and go along to my active effects and find the Dragon Priest Otar circlet, you can see it does in fact have the same enchantment as the Otar mask. And, oh, let me get a little closer, as you can see, it even looks pretty cool. It's a very, it's got the, a version of the mask almost, but with glowing eyes in the center. And there's one of these for every single one of the masks. So all the different colors with all the different enchantments. Now, I have no idea whether or not this is lore friendly or not, and quite frankly, don't care. They look great, and they have the enchantment from the mask, making that drop an actual useful one uh, to my character. And this mod also comes with a very cool replacer for the ethereal crown. So, if you don't like the very bulky look to the ethereal crown, and you want something a little more um, subtle, and tasteful, this may be something you can try out. You can actually have a version of the mod without this replacer. If you like the crowns for the masks, but you don't want the replacer for this crown, you can actually get that. But I actually think this crown is pretty cool looking. It's, it's got a very, very mystical look to it, almost as if the center cog is being suspended in a magical field. Again, this is going to come down to personal taste. Depends on your character, I suppose. Oh, and if you're wondering, you can wear all of these crowns with the fur hood that you craft in Frostfall. So as you can see here, the crown is just visible underneath the hood. So, if you want the enchantment from the Dragon Priest masks, but you don't want to cover your beautiful face, this is a mod for you. The crowns look great, they work just fine. Uh, you can have the crown and the mask if you want to have the mask on your uh, bust at home. And just in case you are wondering, the crowns are available even for ones you've already got. So if you've got a crown already in your inventory, when you install this mod, the, sorry, the mask in your inventory, the crown will also appear. If you take an existing mask out of a container, at home or your horse if you're using convenient horses the crown will automatically appear in your inventory immediately thereafter so even if you've collected all the masks you can get all the crowns okay guys that is about it for this video I will, of course, be ending with some screenshots that you guys have been posting. Thank you for that. If you keep posting them, I will keep using them. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next Skyrim Mod Sanctuary, or whichever video you decide to join me for. And uh, until then, as always, have fun.